Hey everybody, welcome back once again to another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. Today we're talking about color. We're going to continue on in our composition series. Uh, but before we do, I want to make a couple announcements. Um, if you haven't visited the website in a while, you might want to do that. Um, we've got some new stuff that we're doing. I have a second podcast that I do with my buddy Wade Griffith, who's an excellent photographer. It's a little bit different format. It's audio only, and we're able to go a longer duration and talk about more stuff. It's very much more casual, less researched. And uh, anyway, we sit around and talk about the subject that we all love the most, which is photography. And if you want to know how to subscribe to that and you want to know what's going on with that, uh, visit our website, which is theartofphotography.tv. And uh, another thing I want to talk about too, um, you know, we've done Twitter for a while and we've recently started um, using more of the Facebook page. And I think this is really important because I'm able to post daily things in there. And if you like what you see on the show and you want to be, you know, in the loop and, and get more, uh, basically get more information, uh, the Facebook page is an incredible way to go. And we're really trying to expand the reach of the show so we can do more on it. So check that out if you get a chance. Anyway, the links are all on the website. So go to theartofphotography.tv, check it out and let me know what you think. You can leave a comment there. Um, but today, back to the, uh, the episode at hand, we are talking about color. Now, I want to do a disclaimer up front. Um, what we're not talking about today is I'm not going to talk about like, you know, color value studies, tones, um, saturation, color wheel. We're not going into any kind of color theory at all. I'm going to assume that you already know some of this. We will do an episode on this uh, down the road. But I think it's really important for the composition series not to get bogged down in that at first. I'd rather look at how you can use color to enhance your composition and some ways of doing that. And I want to talk about historically where color kind of comes into play in photography. You know, photography was not invented in color. Color came much later. And there was a long term um, period where the acceptance of color photography as real photography, you know, just didn't exist. People didn't look at it that way. Now I think we think of that totally different. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, because photography now, you have to go actually make it black and white if you're in the digital world. Whereas, you know, before, color was something that was very foreign. So it's just kind of a paradigm shift than where we are today. And so I think it's a skill that is been lost a little bit along the way uh, because of you know, what we're brought up on shooting digital photos. So anyway, I want to talk about it. I want to show some examples of some, some colorists that I think are really good at this throughout history. And so let's go look at some images and talk about color. Okay, so we're talking about the use of color in composition and, you know, how this is done with a pretty nice effect, I think, um, throughout history. And a couple things to remember here is that, you know, photography did not start out in color. Uh, you know, photography, well, there's, there's kind of two points to this. Photography started out uh, merely in monochrome, black and white images, and color was more or less something that came along later in various processes. And today... It's kind of hard for us to imagine those terms because black and white is not native anymore. We tend to shoot on digital cameras and the colors reproduced right there. The other thing that's interesting is modern cameras are built for extreme color accuracy or they try to be anyway. And I think one thing that kind of gets lost that I think is important and that's why I wanted to do this episode on color as it relates to composition because I think there's something that to be said for some kind of sometimes the crudeness or the the things that you know aren't really natural or don't work having said that a couple of things i want to look at um this is a really early color image and it's not a whole lot of color going on in here but this is uh the uh, the pond moonlight by edward stecken and it's a beautiful image it's gum bichromate process and gum bichromate uh, allowed some color manipulation so when you did the print you could do multiple layers of it and you could indeed suggest color and you can see that the color though in modern terms probably is not accurate um it's probably subdued it's faded a certain way um and and the other thing that i don't know because with bichromate i didn't see this when it was originally made obviously so you know the effects of time on an image like this are something to consider too of, of whether or not it, it stays but it's a very curious use of color particularly the time that strecken was shooting and there was not a lot of color at that time the other point I want to make, though, is, and I think this is important, too, is that the art world really didn't view color as acceptable for a long time. And 
we'll come back to where that came into play, but this is a little bit later. This is 1925, and this was a feature that was run in National Geographic magazine, and it's labeled The Young Women of Tripoli in Holiday Dresses. And there was, I'll go ahead and click on the link here. Um, I'll put this in the show notes as well, but there's other images from this spread too. People were not used to seeing color images at this time, and so this was something that was fairly new, it was fairly different. In the case of National Geographic, though, they were going for sharing something with the world, you know, and not an artistic representation of something. And this was an autochrome process, which was the first oh, commercial tried and true process. And, you know, these were made on plates. In fact, I've got an image here of a package of autochrome plates. Um, it was a black and white based emulsion that had some dye transfer that was going on in there as well. The exposure time, you know, the ISO was so slow on these, it was like about a second exposure that, that a lot of these were taken at. Um, when you blow these up, they're extremely grainy. I don't know if you can see that in the larger example. You can. Uh, they're very grainy. It was not a real beautiful process, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and there are some things that are very hauntingly interesting about this image. Every now and then, it's kind of popular to see on the Internet, people will link up to various early representations of photography in various countries. And, you know, there was a certain... Uh, you know, beauty to that. Now, color was not, I, th I think, as far as fine art goes, that the, the museum world or the fine art world looked at color as, you know, something that was not accepted in, in the art community. It was, you know, more like black and white was the true representation of photography. It was the way to do things artistically because you were removed from reality by having a complete lack of color. And I've stated that you know, on the podcast before. But the guy who came along who changed that was William Eggleston. And Eggleston's work is very controversial. Um, some people love it. Some people completely hate it. Uh, this was an image from Greenwood, Mississippi, 1974. This is the Red Ceiling. It's very famous. And there was a show that went on in New York in 1976, I believe, where uh, 76 or 78, I believe it was 76, at MoMA, where all of a sudden William Eggleston's work was shown. It was a big breakthrough because all of a sudden here was this extreme color photography um, that was now being taken seriously as fine art. Uh, this is kind of Andy Warhol era. Um, you know, things were changing, and I think it was time for that. But what's interesting about Eggleston's work, um, and I'll show you a couple other pictures. This is another one that I just think is extremely beautiful. A lot of this early color work, um, which these were dye transfer prints, the colors are not accurate. The white balance has some issues. Uh, there's a real retro kind of nostalgic feel to these compositions, and the color has a lot to do with that. Uh, I love this composition, this woman with the hair, and you don't see her face. It's just her back to you, and these two women smoking in a booth at a restaurant. Um, I just think it's it's got an amazing nostalgic feel, and it's it's quite beautiful. I think it's also worth noting that Eggleston, because he was one of these first guys to come along and have this taken seriously, when you start to look and note the use of color, um, and you know, as we've talked about rhythm and patterns before using objects or subjects, if you look at something like this, the way the red shoe echoes this face that's on the shopping bag, um, you start to see connections like that. And this is something I feel has been lost in recent years with a lot of photographers because I think we're so used to color and we take it for granted sometimes that it's not thought out a lot of times. And you don't have to get into a lot of heavy color theory necessarily, but it's just simply, you know, a, a way of thinking about it. Um, this is another one of my favorites, which segues into the next guy I'm going to talk about. This is just a woman in a subway. I think this is one of Eggleston's wonderful shots. I just love this. There's an abstraction because you can't see the woman's face. Um, the color is is just it's very toned down it's very it's not real prominent in this image there's not a lot of reds there's not a lot of things that grab your eye it's blues and greens and deeper colors like that so anyway really beautiful stuff um, another gentleman who was a well-known photographer at the time but not for his color work uh saw leader did a lot of magazine work and he shot mostly in black and white because that's what publications were, were done in at the time and probably in the 1990s uh his work was rediscovered and he did a lot of these color images that were just personal work that he had done. Uh, they weren't really shown to anyone, and he's become known for this. Somebody's done a documentary on him that's coming out pretty soon. And this work is elegant, it's beautiful, it's interesting. Uh, there's abstraction that creeps into it, and this is a guy in a taxi, presumably, the yellows and the reds. And also, you know, the technology these people were shooting on dictated how these colors were going to come out a lot of times, where you have kind of a faded quality to them. This is probably... 
I'm going on a limb guessing here, but it looks to me like early C41 process or something like that. And it's not accurate color representation, but there's something that has such a great feel to it because it's not accurate. Um, the faded quality to it, again, with the you know kind of nostalgic sense that you get from some of these. This one's absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, taken through a fogged up window in winter. A guy with a yellow truck behind it. Very simple, but the color is what really makes this work. This would be a good image in black and white, but the color is what really brings this out and makes it prominent. I think that's important to note. Um, a couple other things here. This is interesting too. Again, uh, you know, an older image. This is a uh, you know from the great Magnum photographer Fernando Schiana. And again, just a very beautiful image with the yellows, the skin tones, uh, they're very subdued. It's just a beautiful picture. And I think the color has that a lot to do with that. Also worth noting in this is notice that the color tends to be, and when I say monochrome in this case, I don't mean black and white, but you see a lot of yellows, skin tones. Again, there's not much that's contrasting this. There's not blatant reds or greens or blues or, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of matched in hue as, you know far as that goes and I, I think that's a, a, a beautiful fact that a few people are doing but again it's it's you don't see a lot of people doing that these days um, some contemporary work this is Ori Gersht and we've talked about him before when we did the tempo episode and again these are the exploding still life flowers and I think they're just really gorgeous in how you have this dark background that blends in with one the motion of these flowers imploding they're freeze-dried and then blown up as they're being photographed but again you see these reds oranges maybe a little purple that that come in but everything works in a very harmonious sort of way and you know there's not a lot of there's not so much going on that it becomes distracting to to another color or something you know it, there's a lot of order it's not chaotic um and then a couple images by one of the i think one of the great photographers working today these are portraits by dan winters who's a texas photographer um and this is um laura dern Beautiful image. Uh, notice that, and I know he, he shoots large format, and he shoots um, C41 process film. And again, it has a little more subdued look to it. Uh, the white balance isn't entirely accurate all the time. In this case, you do have a contrast, but it's still very simple. Skin tone is one color, blonde hair, red lipstick, contrasting with the with the kind of turquoise-ish blue background green thing. And, you know, again, there's not other colors there to distract. All of a sudden, you don't start to see oranges or, you know, purples or something like that. It, it, there's a, there's a, a continuity to it, and there's a harmony quality to it. Uh, very well-known portrait of Leonardo DiCaprio that he did, very similar quality. It's, it's very muted, very subdued. Um, it's almost darker and whispers to you a little bit, and these are just very beautiful portraits. And then finally, this is another Dan Winters image of um, a space shuttle. And notice that the white balance on this is definitely off. This is a cloudy day. Um, I don't know the technical um, objects that he shot with as far as um, what type of film, what process. But it, again, it's the look we're going for, and this is what I want you guys to see in this is is is. Again, it's muted colors, a lot of similarities. This is almost a black and white image, but it, the color gives it just a little bit of lift. So all these images, and this is what I want you to have the takeaway on here. You know, we didn't do a color theory episode. We didn't do, you know, and we could do that later. But for now, I want to kind of create, oh, a sense that you guys can be conscious of of using color to work in your composition. And I think that's where you're gonna to start to get really interesting results. And something that I don't see a lot of photographers doing nowadays. And I think it's you know something worth striving for. Again, extend your range considerably. Anyway, if you have any questions, anything, hit me up on uh, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Flickr, whichever you choose, um, or check out our website, which is theartofphotography.tv. And thanks again for watching. I will see you guys next time.